approving the utility extensions, uh, letter approving um, the fire hydrant email um, regarding the inspection of conditions, the DEQ approval, and the title report, consenting to plat, all of the plat drawings and record drawings and tax information as required. So they were in compliance with, with each of the conditions. We granted, the city had granted a variance to allow 1.5 parking spaces, um, but uh, it was met. And you might remember that the six groups of parking spaces um, were made bigger, right? In case we had bigger vehicles with bike hitch racks or so on. And so the parking spaces, there's fewer of them because you're not pulling your own camper. You're, the camper's there and you're coming to stay. Um, all utilities were installed in conformance with the requirements of the city, as well as DEQ. Um, prior, they, we have the DEQ approval letters. The, um, the fire hydrant that was going to be internal was deleted by the public works director and the fire chief based on the location of the existing fire hydrant. Um, so they, all areas that were disturbed were reseeded and um, noxious weeds were, were sprayed. They, they had submitted their final landscaping plan and they put in all the trees and bushes and um, they met the three year from the preliminary plan, obviously. So um, staff recommends adoption of resolution 1910, which approves the findings of fact as set out in CFP 2302 and adopts final plan at 201 Highway 2 East. All right, Council, may I have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve uh, resolution 19. Second. Second that Aubrey. I'll go call please. Councillor Robinson? Aye. Councillor Shepherd? Aye. Councillor Fisher? Aye. Councillor King? Aye. Councillor Lovering? Aye. Councillor Piper? Aye. Mayor Barnhart? Aye. Resolution 1910 is approved. Um, before we move on, I have a question for the fire chief. Were you looking at that hybrid over on third that's got the fence built right around it as part of your requirements for a fire suppression? Um, there's one there's one out on the highway that's very close to, I believe. Um, honestly, I don't remember because it's been a little while ago. But I know there was two that were within the fire for and different feet, so that's why I'm... I was just curious, that one out on third down in front of the wood folks there, okay. they got the cedar fence put around it, they made a little square around the hydrant that I don't know any high about farming that could go in there and hook up a, uh, a large diameter hose. Does it have does it need a 36 inch you know? No. Oh. I mean it it does not have it. Would you look at it please? Because it would be very useful if you had so it. So in front of the um the wood the cabinet place right by the Yeah actually it's in the empty lock. Right next to right next to AWM or whatever it is is an empty lock. I've always been concerned about that because there's no way you can get a hydrant on it if you have that large wood manufacturing place mm -hmm. and now you have the storage building or whatever it calls that for the back of this new subdivision. Okay. Thanks. So page E, let me know about page E. Can we let's do a vote for granting? No. No, it's not good. I had a speech already. <laughs> <laughs> We're post now. Um, page, page 77 in your packets has the, <laughs> page 77 has the flat, and you can see this little blue dot, kind of this little bit of yellow down here in this corner, it said new hydrant, but it wasn't functional after they finished reviewing it. There is a, a fire hydrant just to the west of this property. Mm -hmm. So over by the entrance, over by the entrance to Columbia Falls RV Park is the next fire yes. so. yes. So. But then my, the one I'm talking about is on third up. Right. Okay. Uh, we go on and we'll go to uh, reports, business, mayor, and council. 
John, do you have anything to say? I don't, but I'm thank you. Good to go, thank you. Good to go. Mr. Mayor, Susan, I was concerned. You know, we've been waiting 40 years for our sidewalk, and it looks like we're going to be waiting another 40 years for our sidewalk over there. What are we doing about acquiring the little corner that is not owned by the city with the high mm -hmm. Now that the building's for sale. E. So it's MDOT's right of way. Um, they have instituted that the right of way phase, which added that about $16,000 to our cost. And then they will make, so based on the size, Department of Transportation will purchase that property from the owner. And based on based on their calculations, so they added a couple more thousand to to our share. Um, so and the time frame, of course, once it goes through that group, it's probably another two to three years. No, the, so the right away phase added that we, we missed a, that bump of it had to be submitted. All engineering had to be submitted by September in order to have 2024 construction. Fingers crossed, we're looking at 2025. Yeah. So, but they, but they will address that in the right-of-way phase. Any other question I have, why didn't they let anybody know that nobody was our representative to the board? You know, what's wrong with them, Doc? I'm sure they could have found somebody that GM Forte could have approved. Because we obviously this stuff can't be approved because we didn't have a board member after the former mayor of Bill resigned. I don't understand their process is what I'm asking. You would have thought after she resigned a year ago that they would put a notice to the three cities. We have no representation to MDOT because those are the gentlemen who bring these things up to make the decisions and what he said, correct? Basically. So why did they let somebody know? The bureaucracy at work as usual? I don't know. That's a good question, isn't it? It's like we've got our heads up against it all the time. I guess. No wonder we can't get anything done with MDOT. Huh. Anything else, Michael? That's all. Yeah. Nothing tonight, thank you. I just had one simple question that was brought up to me by my wife, and that was this. Who cleans our uh, restrooms in the parks now? Is that part of our uh, monthly uh, payment to the uh, company that does the internals here, that cleans for us? No, our contracted janitorial company only cleans River's Edge Park, and with the addition of the second floater uh, more hours into parks, our, our parks are waterproof clean the bathrooms. You just one. Except they, for River's Edge, so they clean. Well, there's just one. Columbus and Parks cleans Columbus, Columbus. and, and Maritette. Oh, and, and Maritette? Yes. So it did, River's Edge is the only one that's done by the uh, company that cleans here. Right, it's year round, and the other two get buttoned up for the winter. Oh, I see. Just, just some question, that's all I have. Okay. Um, city manager report? All right. Um, so I'm glad I put it, put things in writing. So we did have a, um, it was a good meeting um, with BNSF and M MBD and, and the city on 12th Avenue West. The city will, as originally planned in our project, will purchase the concrete panels we estimated them at $72,000. They'll come back to us with a, with a real cost. Um, we did, so our local BNSF uh, folks were not opposed to granting an easement to complete the sidewalk outside of having that crossing completed because the, our sidewalk doesn't touch that pavement, right? It's, so, so they're gonna look into that because otherwise we were, Obviously, we have work stoppage because of bad weather, right? We're not pouring concrete now. But come spring, so we have a few months to get uh, sidewalk easement in, into place so we can get that done. But the really good news was if we pay for the concrete panels and we're doing the sidewalk, that BN, BNSF and MDOT will do their special state funding in 8020 and we're not paying for arms and gates and so on. Susan, I have a question. When will they install the uh, concrete crossings? 
Um, that's also part of the discussion. Because isn't that we can't run our sidewalks and tell them those are going to extend beyond the arms, right? The existing or where the arms are going. A little bit. So. I'm just saying, so can we put the sidewalk in before they plant the new? Based, based on the construction diagram, yes, they can put it, there's, I want to say it's, there's so many feet distance. I want to say it's four feet, but that might not be right. Because it, you guys can see where the sidewalk ends now, right? It's poured. So it goes around that hole and under the guy where we had to avoid, we could not move the flat electric pole that was kind of right in the way of where you put the sidewalk because mm -hmm. that's how right away works, right? So we're going to the west, so there's more distance right there, and then the the, and our and our concrete uh, uh, panels extend out that way. So that now my point being, we could get as soon as they have the concrete panels in, them installing arms wouldn't hold us up from completing our sidewalk. That's what we're hopeful. Okay. Yes, and and they were nodding in agreement. We shook hands, and everybody left. So um, it sounded more promising than before. So they're drafting documents that then our legal legal will have to look at. It. <coughs> And At the time you met with BNSF, was there any mention of the crossing it before it being closed? No. <laughs> they were even taking down some of the sign. They just <clears throat> stacked stuff up in front of it so the people could figure it out. You drive over there sometime. Yeah. It's, it's a good jump on a vehicle. <laughs> You'll get somebody stuck up on the truck. So we <laughs> not approve any of them. You know. Well, it sounded like they were going to improve it. Oh, really? Well, because, so when we first started 12th Avenue West, the, um, not the training master, or whatever, one of the masters that would know that there were concrete panels there told us that, that they had nine of those concrete panels for our project, that those are being used, and it sounded like they're being used on four. Like, they're no longer available, but it's not an item that has a 40 to 50 leg or anything like that. So they told me they were replacing those concrete mm -hmm. panels at Ford. And then they were use those <laughs> over on 12th? No, we have to get new ones now. Because oh, I was going to say, don't let them install us. No, 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 we have to get new ones. <laughs> so, um, anyway, a better meeting than expected. Good. So, um, so Parks Department is collaborating with Ryan from People and Carnivores. <coughs> Council, you had dedicated the $5,000 in your budget to, to partner with People and Carnivores and Fair Activity. The, um, they're completing their bear conflict assessment uh, within the city that was you know, free, of, free of charge. They work with Fish, Wildlife, and Parks, monitoring activity. Um, they are able, so we're going to put more bear proof garbage cans in each of our parks. And so we're leveraging our funds because the ones we got last year, you might remember, were $9,000 and were kind of a shock. But um, people in carnivores are providing some funding and, um, and we'll provide some, fun some funding. But they're working the park, sounds like four to five weeks, four weeks before they hit the ground. So we can get them installed. But there are also um, the concrete pads. Um, Council, you might, might remember that after we bought those very expensive garbage cans, it was noted that they could be hauled away with a couple of heavy men in a truck. So we bolt them down to concrete pads so they cannot be just readily hauled away. So the, the partnership with people in carnivores includes the, they ordered the concrete pads and bolts like that we're going to be ready to just plant these and then it sounds like we'll have bear proof garbage containers in all of our parks so um, so that was good news um, i'm going to show you a copy of the new tax statement and kind of review some of the tax um, things as soon as i go through these other notes um, working working with jackie and the columbia falls foundation she finally was able to get a, a, a quote from an electrician. It was $2,300, but he was running conduit for 100 feet. And I was like, there's not that much room between the building and the, 
monument, so I was trying to figure out where they were coming from, if they were on a conduit for 100 feet. And then I contacted the foundation because the 2300 was to install a provided light. And the, the originally the, that's just the labor to run the wiring. Uh, and I don't remember what the quotes were. It was, they were from the east on the lights. So um, I've been playing phone tag with the president of the foundation in order to get that. And then after the monument was put in or something, there was a change in the wiring. You might remember over on the Glacier Bank side. It doesn't make a lot of sense to run wiring and put a light on one side and not put it on the other. So I'm trying to get the information on what does it, what do we have to do? Because that outlet that had been right there behind the monument got, got moved, removed. Um, so I'll be bringing that back and you guys can decide if that is something you want to move forward with or with your urban leakages. All right, so um, Chief Peters got to go to uh, Sydney for state ball. Um, and so we we're postponing that capital review. He did send a picture of Sydney's police station. Um, it was this big, beautiful new facility that, of course, is in partnership with the county, and I reminded him they have oil money. Don't be getting any ideas. Um, they're going to get new carpeting um, down there. <laughs> <laughs> new flooring in the police department this year. That's Are we moving forward on the wall at all? Well, I'm, I'm waiting for our contractor to give it back. We put a placeholder in the budget. Is that that had going forward to carpet, wasn't it? Yes. So um, I don't know. I might just have to stop out. Go go visit. Um, so this morning we did review the wastewater treatment plant. They're only at 60% engineering. I spoke with their higher ups at HDR. They, we are literally nine months behind schedule. Um, we will, as I work with. DNRC, because of our funding, have to look at construction times. Uh, they are apologetic that, that it's taken them this long. We'll, we'll be updating this schedule in the timeline. Sounds like we won't call, call for bids. I want to say hopeful to call for bids in December. December, and then awarding in January. And then, you know, we did shorten the amount of construction time. We have a lot of deadlines with that grant funding, so we have to make sure we're still, that we have not convinced it so that, you know, contractors are going to be more expensive because now they have a shorter time to If work. we can't get this, or it's really close to going <laughs> underneath that timeline, is there any way we can get HDR to write a huge explanation about why it took that extra amount of time? To get this done, which is putting us in a tough position? Um, <coughs> it won't help, but, but we do have our it won't, our, it won't it won't change those deadlines, but I but our our program manager at DNRC will work with us. We can the city, not the engineer, the city can request an extension beyond that December date. There is a federal drop dead date. Right. If, if it's not done by then, too bad, so sad. But some of the money, so that 1.4 million that we put in direct, that has that December 2024 deadline. But if we're awarding the project, as we discussed this morning, if we award and they start in the spring, like the bioreactor expansion was estimated at 945,000. There's a couple big ticket items that can get done readily in the summer build. Um, they're expensive. The, the blower is the only item, as we've reviewed that, that has a, a big lead time. It's estimated about 195,000, and that right now blowers are 40 to 50 weeks out. But that would still, I think we'd take, but it's not the major ticket item, right? It's, so, like that, if that was, they can do everything except place the, they can do the necessary 
construction around the paint house with the blower on there. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, they thought that all the rest of those mixers, those, those, are, those are in the normal 20, 26 week time until they. So um, you will, at our next meeting, I'll, hopefully I'll have all the information so I can show you kind of those deadlines and how we're going to amend the budget because we were spending our, our money on the engineering up front I think we were going to start pulling that out as we were constructing. Uh, working with our program manager, we're going to move some of that around and pull the trigger sooner on construction and, and engineering. Just move where we're going to take the money so that we're not risking the deadline with the 1.4 million and the other money. So um, they're supposed to be getting that to me by early next week. They were doing some, they did the whole guts review on each of those, each of the items with uh, Grady and Chris throughout today, see what kind of changes need to be done. Uh, but we have that 90% plan coming, submit, it'll be submitted to DEQ. We can call for bids, uh, subject to DEQ's approval. Uh, DEQ says to allow 90 days, but they then kick them out about 30. Anyway, I just wanted to alert you though that, that I had I called the higher ups at HDR and said this isn't acceptable. We gotta get this back. We gotta um, you know, when we awarded that contract, they assured us they had the time and the manpower and um, so the nine month delay to, to get to where we're gonna call for bids is a little alarming. So um, we met with Teamsters Local Unit Number Two last Wednesday for the wage opener, and we have tentative agreement. I just need to receive their notice of ratification. It will be on your next council agenda to to approve that. Um, we had a, it was just a wage opener for this year because it's a three-year contract through 2025. But we did wage openers. You might remember last year with with the economy and the numbers and the, it was, we negotiated wages for the 23 fiscal year and then did wage openers for the other two. So that, um, because we were faced with about a seven to eight percent inflation rate at that time, which we're like, okay, things are gonna calm down, which, which they have. Um, the, the offer to them was the same as the non-union, the, the uh, 5% that we have to an agreement on. And we made a slight adjustment on the position, um, the grade 13 position, uh, in order to be competitive um, in the market right now. We are we are um, advertising for our water need position. We're extending that. Our first look was the 20th, and we did not receive. We received a couple of applications, but there we did not receive a single completed application. From anyone with any qualification. So we're going to be kicking it out again. Um, and we also made a uh, by memorandum of agreement. So historically in our collective bargaining bargaining agreements and in our personnel policy, the city gives credit and it's and it's defined for education or experience directly tied to that position after your first year with the city. The, the, what we were bumping up against is that our sister cities and throughout the state, they do that upon hire. So instead of entry level, maybe you get to start at step four because you have 10 years of experience. So uh, I remember which sister city was advertising. So they were advertising a gap of like 27 to 30, right, depending on your experience. We were starting with the, with the 24 week schedule at, at 27, right? And so, and then say, oh, but after your first year, we can give you these steps. So the the um, Teamsters, we have, they, they did sign the memorandum of agreement. Um, we want to always keep in, in line with the council's goal to attract good candidates, retain them, and motivate them. So, um, that's what we're looking for. So 
just waiting on waiting on signatures. So real quickly then, let me show you the new tax bill. So um, <coughs> let a county change their tax um, system from, from their original internal in-house programming. And so this this is going to be like up on top will be the name and the legal and everything. But then here's your tax bill. Um, and so what I want to I want to show you though, it, so you can see the city here. Look at our city in the resort tax relief for this particular tax order. I don't even know whose it is because when Larry Johnson gave it to me from the county, there was no assessor number attached to it. But so here's somebody's tax bill. It shows the two mills, emergency disaster, med levy, resort tax relief, um, city, and then total city, right? And then, of course, then there's specials. What's new this year is that under special, they break out. So if you're in, so if you're in the, in an urban renewal district or a PED, you're now going to see under special, you can see that up there, right up there where I just pushed. Um, you're going to see either industrial park, TED, or urban renewal. Now, I, I, I'm adding more information to our budget summary because we know that, that, that we didn't levy more mills. That that's the incremental value from the base year, which on the industrial park, TED, was 2015. So, it, the way the calculation works, and it's always worked this way, it just doesn't, it has not previously appeared on a tax bill. Black Mountain Software doesn't put it on the face of the tax bill, but evidently Tiger Technology, which 14 counties, including Flathead, use. Um, the backbone of their system puts it here. So we are worked collaboratively with the county. They're also adding on the coupon. There's going to be a description of that that will only appear if you're in a TIF or a TED or a urban renewal. That this doesn't represent additional taxes. It's the incremental value, and you know, basically, see the website for more information. Um, and then the city and the county, we are going to collaborate. The treasurer's office and myself and Barb, we're going to collaborate on language, and we're going to put it put it on the website, um, because otherwise there's going to be a lot of phone calls, right? If this didn't appear on your tax statement before, and now you see this big number on your tax statement. So, like I said, I pulled back the budget message and said, got to add page, got to add some information here. We'll put it on our website. County will put it on their website, and, and we'll move forward. Um, so, but this yeah, a new new software, um, it doesn't, so in the calculation, for example, it doesn't, like the six mills are excluded by statute, and the new, any voted levies voted after the creation, so like the school district bond and the 911 are, are Aren't included in that. Like they're excluded. They get they get everything, including the incremental value. So uh, we went through uh, with the uh, county went through several tax bills, but you had to. I think I, I described it to uh, the finance director and the chief clerk, and like you had to peek behind the wizard's curtain, right, in order to look at the numbers to determine that they were correct. So the county had done their usual, they kick out the, the base information and say, tell us if this looks correct. And we, I really struggled with trying to figure out if it was correct because I've always just been able to take the official emails, calculate it, and have it work out. But that they, they, they put it in a whole, a whole lot more districts. There's like four different schedules, so you had to be able to, like I said, peek behind the curtain. But it is calculated correctly. Uh, that, that would be verified. So, uh, new tax statement. It'll just mean a, probably a little, 
we'll field a few more phone calls, hoping that the information on the tax statement within the budget, uh, budget message, and, and we're, I'm working with my staff to do a little budget brief. Um, I saw another city, Colorado, they were out of Colorado, so I had like this little budget handout, budget brief, and I'm like, yeah, our, our council would like that. Um, anyway, so this is the tax statement, and then um, because, right, we were, we were talking about this in great detail, like how, what's gonna be the overall impact? So I don't, currently I only have access to the tax roll, which doesn't break it out by little, every little number, but in total. So I gathered a, a sample of, of our tax statements. Um, they're not identified by individual on here. Because you guys have seen mine in the past, mine's, mine's first, but we, we already know from our certified valuation that our taxable value increased by an overall 46.67%. Residential had increased 51%, commercial 59 which we know that some of those others, right, the last will decreased or didn't increase as much, and see 46.67. Countywide, pursuant to the Department of Revenue, Residential in Flathead County, there was a 45% increase and commercial was 60. So you can see our residential was a little higher. Um, so my, my taxable value here, the 3074, um, my assessed value, taxable value. Last year's tax mills on my tax bill were 732.94. This year they're 521.65. So what this demonstrates is that mills went down, so from all taxing jurisdictions, went down 29%, right? Which, but that's what we say, you know, the county had dropped mills, <coughs> we dropped mills, so values go up, we're tied to dollars. So my total taxes are going up 3%, $102.30. City taxes, so we, we decreased our mills 50%, and in that total taxes, right, and in that mix, we, we dropped on mine, my city taxes dropped uh, by 49%, 214.81. So we can just, I, I did just samples, right, and one thing I noticed was we're kind of in the ballpark um, in terms of that overall residential and, and commercial. So tax tax number two, so this this taxpayer, their assessed value only went up 39%, which meant that they were below that average. So so check this out. Less than 1%, $13.34 increase with a 31% decrease on the city taxes. So and that's what we that's what we had talked about, right? Like, how do you find a sweet spot if your valuation goes up higher than the average, then your taxes are going to go up a little bit more. And um, you can see my mistake here. I copied seven twice. So this taxpayer on example seven, their assessed value jumped fifty six percent, which was higher than average. But again, mills dropped 29%. Their taxes went up 11.67% or $509.08. City taxes had decreased 22%, right? So that 509 was that direct result that net of the city's drop $211. So we would have automatically dropped 20 mills based on the, based on the calc and then we dropped another 70 mils. Now next year, it's probably gonna go up a little bit, right? Because we have to fund everything and we don't have as much resort tax to offset that. Um, Senate Bill 332 um, will require us to, if we increase taxes then our budget resolution must include the impact on a $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 property. If you increase taxes, 
you know, Flathead County interpreted that and they said you have to change your resolution if you increase or decrease, but that's the statute. Well, they haven't caught it's it's codified that it's not on their credit cycle yet. Specifically said if you increase taxes. Now, also because because of Senate Bill 332, I added that that into our budget message that we decrease taxes and therefore you know here here's the decrease impact. But um, by by code, we don't have to by when we reduce it, we don't have to include that because um, Senator Hertz, who had um, sponsored that bill, wanted that front and center of that conversation. Mayor and Council, you had that conversation every single one of your budget meetings. I told you you were going to get tired of talking about it, but we talked about it every time um, for the benefit of our taxpayers because we do, we are very transparent. Um, we put that information out there from the beginning. So this, um, our one, our one uh, um, commercial example that I threw in here, this property increased a little higher than the average and their taxes are going up 14%, just like the 19% reduction in city taxes. But I wanted to give you a sampling of these. Here's where we're at. And so anyone, and you can see it, like tax example number six, hey, they went up 42%. Um, taxes went down 29 and um, they have just a $68.47 increase in taxes, 2%. But that's, that was our message, right? That don't panic over the 43 or the 45 or the 62, that won't be your tax increase. And if the, um, the governor has asked, asked for the County's tax challenge to immediately go to court, and I believe that their outcome they want an expedient decision on the 95 mills. So the taxes might, when when the actual tax statements come out, they might even be less than this. Because that's in theory, that's how it works, right? Value goes up, it must go down. So, um, so that's what I that's what I had for this evening. Did anybody have a question? Um, I, your budget message includes some of this, right? That here's an example. This is this is the impact. So um, as much information as possible. So when you have your budget book in your hand, when it's um, scanned in and added to the website and sent off to the state website, uh, the the goal is that we're answering all those questions. So. All right. Next, we would have our city attorney report. Do you have anything for us this evening, Dustin? Nothing this evening, no. Chief Chief? No, Chief, <laughs> Chief Sergeant? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> we thought we'd just skip the sergeant thing and we'd just go right to Chief. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good, good. All right. Council? I move to adjourn. Okay, second. Those in the main, second to adjourn all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.